Okay, I wanted to go over the equipment that we're going to use to make this under quilt. Um, like I said, I was trying to do this on the cheap. Um, I wanted to make an under quilt that would be at least good down to uh, 20 degrees. Um, and I was thinking that, you know, even a cheap one is around $150. And I've seen them get up into the $300. And I love to camp. I can tent camp and be okay, but... You know, once you do hammock camping, going back to a tent is kind of a pain in the butt. So basically this results from a couple weeks ago, um, we did some winter tent camping. And um, because I've hammock camped for so long, um, it's just really hard to go back to a tent. Um, I, I didn't sleep near as good as I do in a hammock. So um, the only reason I didn't use a hammock, one, or well actually two reasons. The first being that my girlfriend was with me and... She, uh, for whatever reason, with it being winter time, didn't even want to attempt uh, hammock camping. Uh, the second reason is because I didn't have under quilts. Uh, the temperatures were going to get down into the low 20s, um, which isn't too bad, but uh, uh, but still, we wanted to at least be comfortable. Um, we ended up hiking about 14 miles and spending a night and then hiking back out. Uh, all in all, it was a good good little trip. But anyway, so um, I wanted to come up with a solution to build an underquilt. And I've looked at the kits that are online at, uh, you know, Hammock Gear. And excuse me if I get these names wrong. But, you know, I've, I've looked at a couple of places that offer ways to build them really on the cheap. And um, it was going to cost, um, I think, between $60 and $100 plus shipping, depending on where I got it from. Um, and, you know, they were synthetic. I was looking at synthetic. And then I was like, you know, maybe I should just look into buying the materials locally because I kind of wanted to have it done in two or three days for another trip we're going to be doing this weekend. Uh, today is Monday, so actually I've got uh, four, five full days to get this done. And uh, this is what I come up with. And uh, if if uh, I'm here after this weekend, I guess it worked fine. So basically at Walmart, they have these Ozark Trail 40 degree square sleeping bags made for backpacking and what they mean is these are actually relatively small um, I use the mummy one as my uh, backpack when I do hiking um, it, it's relatively light but the square one I figured would be better for making an under quilt and I'm gonna go more into that on how we do that uh, in this video um, this is actually going to be the base uh, the, the biggest part of the quilt its cost was basically $39.97. I wanted to have a vapor barrier. And originally I tried to use a cheap emergency blanket. And it was so crinkly and tore so easily. I finally just went down the road. We have a field and stream store which is very similar to like Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's. And I knew I was going to pay whatever retail price is for this. But... They have them in stock. I see them all the time. It costs $6.50. Because I didn't want the vapor barrier rubbing up against the outer part of the underquilt, um, I wanted to use some sort of a insulation there, which also bring the uh, also bring the temperature rating down some, I would assume. Um, basically, Walmart has this polyfill extra loft quilt batting. It's actually cut for a uh, crib size, 45 by 60. It costs $4.97. Finally, for, or actually I got a couple more things here. So for the part that goes around the outside that you're going to um, basically run your bungee cord through and your lines to kind of hold it up, um, again, from Walmart, back in the sewing department, they have this double fold uh, quilt bind binding. Um, basically, when you take it out, you find that it's a, a piece of a, a little bit slightly larger than three quarter inch material that's folded over in half. Um, that'll make it really easy uh, to, to create the channels. It's uh, mostly polyester. It's got a little bit of cotton. 55% uh, polyester, 45% cotton. Um, $2.67. Um, outdoor UV rated polyester 
thread. I can't remember what the cost of this was. I actually looked on the receipt and didn't see it. It must be named something. 200 yards of that. I'm sure it couldn't have been more than a couple of dollars. And finally, bungee cord, which miraculously I found this back also at Walmart. Um, back in the craft section, they had 18 foot of bungee cord for $1.97. Um, and then I also found at Walmart a different Walmart than the one I was at I actually found the ends that you use to cinch bungee cord tight uh, back in the camping area outdoor products makes them it's a four pack for a dollar ninety seven so basically what it's going to come down to is for slightly more than sixty dollars I'm going to be able to have this under quilt um, on the cheap um, and within my time frame of five days so uh, stay with me and we'll go ahead and get started on right, this. So basically I've taken the sipping bag out of its stuff sack. I've totally unzipped the zipper. Um, and then I basically just have the sleeping bag laying on my lap. So I can kind of show this to you. But basically what we're doing is when I'm talking about ripping the seam out. You can see the zipper here. And then there's a seam that runs right there and a seam that runs right there. So that's basically the stitching that holds the zipper in. And I'm not sure if this will zoom in far enough or let it focus. It is like so close. But basically each, each part of that seam is like a little uh, loop. And when I'm talking about ripping out the seam... All you're really going to do is take a seam ripper, which you can buy at Walmart for like three bucks. So now I've got the, you can kind of see there, maybe hopefully, come into focus, come into focus. You can kind of see the thread over the end of the seam ripper there. And then when I shove the seam ripper forward, it basically cuts the thread. So what I did was I started doing like every second or third seam. And the farther you go, uh, you'll notice that the material will start to pull away from, from the zipper. So let me get a couple of these pulled out and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so once you get it started, you'll see that uh, basically the material will start to pull away from the zipper. So you're going to basically rip the seam out all the way around the bag, only on the sides, the three sides that has the zipper, so that you can remove the zipper. So go ahead and do that. Um, this is actually the hardest part, probably, um, of making this under quilt. This is actually the second one I've made. Um, and I think that it took me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to rip the zipper out of the last one. So just use the seam zipper and rip out this seam, rip out this seam. And you don't have to do like, um, initially when you first get it started, you got to do like every other one until you get, you know, a section you can stick your thumb under. And then if you just go and rip out like every fifth or maybe third or fifth one, and, and do a section three or four at a time and then you basically just stick your finger underneath there and kind of pull up and it'll separate pretty easily so you don't have to pull out every single like little hump in the thread okay so after you get the uh, zipper removed uh, go ahead and just totally remove the zipper put it somewhere else keep it for another project whatever when you're done you're going to have three sides like this so there's the red then the insulation, then the gray. And then on one end, you're still going to have a finished edge that looks like this. In the center here, it will have this bungee cord area that you want to leave alone. We're going to leave this bungee cord in there just like that. And that is going to serve as one end to cinch up the bag up against the hammock. We also have to go and remove the center seams that run from each side uh, they kind of look like this and basically you're going to do it the same way so 
remove all the center seams. Uh, all right, so basically ripper. after you get the center seams ripped out, you can then lay everything on the floor. Um, just kind of spread it out so that it's flat. And basically this is what you end up with. So you have the uh, the red shell with the insulation. So you have one edge, the top, the other edge, and then down here you still have the gray shell that's still attached at the foot. And it's attached, so it's basically just pulled back so that you can access the rest of the material. We want the orange back of the survival blanket to face the gray side. Then the reflective material of the survival blanket will reflect the heat back into the insulation, uh, which is exactly what you want it to do. You want the insulation to hold your heat. So basically, uh, you're going to cut off the end now of the survival blanket so that it fits. And basically you want that to be centered. All right, so after you get the uh, emergency blanket inside, basically you just fold the gray lining back over. Uh, try to keep the edges pretty straight. Okay, and this next part I've got to do off camera, but basically all you're going to do is you're going to take some uh, sewing needles and you're going to go about an inch in from each edge and you're going to put a needle in um, to hold everything in place maybe about every four to six inches everywhere that there was a seam that went across the center you can kind of see the line there I put a pin so go up to the next one there's a pin go up to the next one there's a pin go up to the next one there's a pin if you kind of see they're kind of they're not really on the line where the seam used to be they're kind of back a little bit and then the other edge is kind of the same way. Going far enough to where the pin is going to catch the emergency blanket. Put a pin. Do that all the way down both edges. So when you sew this back together, you're going to do it in reverse order. So the very first line that you sew, you're going to start at the end where the bungee cord's at. And you're going to go up and you're going to find that first seam right there. And you're going to sew a seam from one side to the next. And basically you're just going to use the existing line that's kind of left over after you rip the seam out as your guideline. Once you get that one done, you go to the next one. And basically you do that all the way down until you get to the end. Okay, so once you get all your center seams sewn in, you can kind of see that the edges now are still open, but the center is sewn. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, black channel material, and you're going to pin it in place along one of the long edges. I basically start like right here, and I run that channel all the way down the edge of the bag kind of sew it or pin it into place you want to leave it overlap some so I'm gonna pin it so that about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch is left over and what that does is that allows enough space for me to run a bungee cord through there um, which you can pull through with a clothes hanger Okay, so basically you're going to uh, sew the part that holds the bungee channel on there with a zigzag stitch. And as you can see here, uh, I do it right at the edge of the material. And then that, that allows you to have this whole area up here that kind of serves as a tube. 
Um, and the the sleeping bag material comes all the way up to about maybe a little bit more than halfway. So from from the edge to about right there is where the material is at. And then you have a little bit of a gap in the end where the bungee cord will go. So that's one long end. Go ahead and do the other side too. And then uh, I'll show you how I do the uh, the short end, the third end that uh, we'll need. So okay, with uh, both of the long edges uh, sewn now, you're also going to do the short edge, but you're going to do it a little bit differently. Instead of doing it all the way across, you're basically going to run two channels that meet almost in the center. See how that is? There's a gap there. So it goes from the center to the edge, to the corner on that side, and then from the center over to the other edge. And this is on the short end. The reason why that we're going to do that, if you look at the factory end, is it has something similar. It actually has a tie in the center like this. And that is basically exactly what we're going to do on the end where the zipper used to be at too. So go ahead and get that. Uh, tack down with needles and go ahead and sew it also. So now that you have all of the uh, channels sewn back in and all of the edges sealed up, uh, for the next part you need a metal clothes hanger. Uh, of course straighten it out the best you can, but once you get it straightened out you're going to take a metal clothes hanger and run it down one of the long edge tracks. And now you can see that I have a clothes hanger inserted into this uh, channel and it comes out on the other end so basically what you're going to do now is you are going to take your bungee cord and wrap it very tightly around these grooves that are in the clothes hanger and then what I did was use a piece of duct tape to put over the end to kind of secure it and then you're going to pull the bungee cord back through the channel so let me get the uh, bungee cord on the end of that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay so now you can see that I have the bungee cord uh, end is kind of duct taped onto uh, let's see if I can get it to focus I guess it ain't going to focus alright but either way it's basically secured to the end of the clothes hanger so now you pull the clothes hanger back out, which then pulls the bungee cord down the long end of the channel. Um, and then basically, once you get this side done, without cutting the bungee cord, you're also going to do it on the other side. So let me get uh, this pulled through this side. I'll go ahead and do the other side, and I'll show you what it looks like when done. Okay, so now I have the bungee cord fed through the both sides of the long sides of the quilt and you can kind of see I didn't cut it it basically starts at this end and I have the ends here loose which I'll explain that here in a minute so it runs down this side comes out goes over to the other side and runs down and comes out and I left the end of this somewhat loose so um, it doesn't really matter which end this comes out on but you'll notice that right here I have the factory edge and basically what they have is they have a bungee cord that runs along the edge and it's sewn in the end here so it's sewn into the end and then it comes up and they have a cinch buckle right there. So basically it's two pieces of cord and a cinch buckle in the center. 
Now if you think about that, what that does is, the way that I set mine up, I take and I cut this extra cord off the end, bungee cord. So something about, you know, I, I cut a couple feet off of it. Then I tie this, these two ends together. Then when I hang my hammock, which is an Eno hammock, and it has the uh, carabiner on each end, I basically just take this and snap it into the carabiner on one end. I go the other end, I snap it into the carabiner, and that holds the edges up. And I can basically take and tighten this up, put a knot in or whatever I need it to tighten it up to raise the hammock up closer to the, uh, to raise the underquilt up closer to the bottom of the hammock. Then, um, I take and cinch this up to tighten the ends against the foot end and the head end. So the part we still have left to do is to take and make the end that we ripped the zipper out of just like this. And I actually found a very similar uh, quick snaps like this at Walmart back in the sporting goods supply. There, they sell them as replacements and it just so happens to fit the bungee cord perfect. So basically you're going to take your excess bungee cord now and then sew the edges so the end into the very edge and then run it in the strap and put you a cinch buckle on there and that'll complete your uh, under quilt and I'll go ahead and do some weights after this is all said and done but uh, for now let me go ahead and finish this up the ones are made by outdoor products are called a cord lock replacement um, this is what they look like and basically you just run the cord the bungee cord through there so basically on the foot end, and I know I don't do the prettiest uh, sewing job, but hey, this is uh, the second time I've ever sewed in my life with a sewing machine. So uh, basically I just run the sewing machine over the end so that it secures the bungee cord to the channel. Um, and I back it up and go over it. I go over it three or four times. So I did that on both ends, and then in the center... I basically just ran it through uh, the cord lock replacement cinch thing and stuck a knot in it so that it could never pull out and uh, basically to cinch it up you just uh, push it in with your finger and uh, that, that completes the whole under quilt. The summer one the one I made for summer use that only has the uh, SOL emergency blanket um, weighs 2 pounds 4 ounces with a stuff sack. And the winter time under quilt uh, with the extra insulation and the emergency blanket is 2 pounds and 11 and a half ounces. So my DIY under quilt is hanging right there. There. Currently 46, it got down to 39. The high yesterday was 70. So the way that this uh, DIY hammock works, you got this bungee cord in here, and it basically goes up and hooks into the carabiner of the uh, hammock. And if you want to raise the tarp more, you tighten up the bungee cord by putting a knot in one end of it. Um, the cinch ends here you can see this is the factory end basically pull it so that it's cinched up against the bottom of the hammock and then the one on my end the that I sewed in 
kind of the same way. Looks like I left that a little loose. I did have a little bit of a cold spot last night. I guess that's probably why.